today i'm making a video and this video is basically to find out if you a new player which character fits the type of style you want to play tekken so in this video i will describe each and every character in the game and what kind of play style the character is and it's up to you to decide if you want to play this type of character and if the character fits your style so i'll tell you how the character should be played so i'll start all the way from the right and i'll start with the bear all right start with kuma at first so we're gonna go through almost the whole roster well we're gonna go through the whole roster and i'm explaining in my mind what kind of character the character is but i'm also going to show examples of um what i'm talking about so y'all can understand like i'm not just gonna like go through the characters say this character's like this this character's like this i'm actually show you uh gameplay examples of um each character in the game and we're gonna go through the whole roster one by one and i'll explain to you what kind of character the bear is a very poke heavy character so in general with the bear you want to poke a lot you know so standing twos i see forward ones to poke because the forward one is plus right see so you set that up and then you can set up with the counter hit but that's launch punishable. We could set up the counter. But he's very poke heavy, so you have to poke a lot. So poking is forward one, forward one, uh, down back two. A lot, a lot of back dashing because his um his back dash is good and it's hard to hit him on his feet. So you know just poke, just poke a lot with punish with down four two one. Of course, you can also if you want to be a little bit riskier mix up with that. Also, you have to use bear stance a lot which is this so you have to poke and rush down with this a lot and you can you have mix-ups like that so you can mix up with that you can mix up with the thing see mix up with the lows down for two you can play dead so he's he's a combination of a poking spacing gimmick character so yeah, you have to you have to play gimmicky and use his hunting stance a lot to create mind games a lot. So a lot of his mind games come with the roll, with the mix up with the roll, and uh, and the bear stance for offense. So you have to poke a lot with him, and then use the hunting stance to your advantage. So poke in space, poke in space, and um, set up counter hits and stuff. This is a counter hit move. If somebody tries to punish, go, you can finish it. You know what I'm saying for the counter hit, fish for counter hits with that. So that's basically. The bear is a poking a poke gimmick character. You have to use a lot of spacing to create whiffs and and when you uh, get the offense, you have to use um hunting stance a lot to open up your mix-ups and stuff like that. So that's it with the bear. You also gotta remember with the bear is that um he's prone to like big boy um damage on combos. He's very prone to the eating big big damage combos. Cause he's a big character, so be remembered to do that plus he's one of the lower tier characters because he doesn't have as much tools as everybody else so yeah you're gonna have to work pretty hard but you can also beat a lot of people too because a lot of people don't know how to deal with gimmicks so if you're a guy that just wants to be a trickster you know what i'm saying and also establish a poke game you could use the bear uh lee chalon that'll be easy because i am a lee chalon main of many years i am a lee chalon main of many years so Let's go, let's go to Lee Chalon. And I'll explain to you, which is pretty easy. Lee Chalon is a full-fledged uh, counter-hit fishing character. Counter-hit fishing spacing character, right? So with Lee, you pretty much want to establish DF1s on block and set up, you know, magic fours in case they go mid. If they do high, you do 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Down two, down three. Use keep out with down 4-4. Four, four. Standing three, back four for keep out. And just establish a counter hit game that's about it with lee you just want to fully focus on that yes he has mix-ups you know he has a little slide 50 50s and stuff like that that you could do you know what i'm saying with this and you know what i'm saying hop kick if you want whatever whatever but in general you should be focusing with lee with a lot of space in his counter hits because mix-ups is not his game he's not a mix-up character yes he has little 50 50s but they all chip damage and if you try to that's not what he gets his damage from he gets all his damage from counter hits like you know magic fours um 
all, all his moves. See? Free combo. Free combo, right? Magic four, free combo. That's all his damage comes from that. So basically, you have to poke and space a lot and fish for counter hits on negatives, right? Back four, full counter hit combo. So you see all his damage comes from counter hits. So you want to set up the counter hits, right? With the with the with the minus frame moves, right? See? Minus two, then you can do four, four, four. Down three, they do highs, they do a mid. So play with your negatives a lot and space. Space. Poke. Get the life lead and just keep setting up counter hits the whole game. So that's how leads should be played. Minimum 50-50s. Only do only go for a slide 50 50 or 50-50 if you need some kind of uh because it's a risk doing it because his tracking is not that good so you just do it if you need to get the life lead again but in general just space and fish for counter hits the whole game so if you want to play with a spacing counter hit fishing poke character lee is a lee will be a good character for you but also got to remember like he's a bit different than other characters a lot of characters in the game have great 50 50s and you could use 50 50s a lot um lee is not a character that you want to play if you want to be a 50 50 style player lee is a lee is a poking counter hit fishing spacing character so if you want a 50 50 guy and you want to just do mix-ups all day and 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 rush down a lot lee's not for you because lee's offense is also not that good just because everything is uh he's a big negative frame type of character you understand what i'm saying so yeah i wouldn't suggest playing um lee if, if you want somebody to be offensive or or to go in with he's more of a spacing lane type of guy set up your counter hits you know you could pressure with him, of course, but it's just to set up counter hits. Uh, Eddie, Eddie doesn't have a good uh, sidestep, really. So with Eddie, you have to learn how to move well like this with back dash cancel and forward dash cancel. And you have to be really good at poking and being lame. You have to be really good at poking and being lame. See? Poke. Poke. Run, 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 run. Space space with you know what I'm saying do that down four one space 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 side step three plus four down four two so yeah Eddie's basically just a lame coward you just want to lame somebody out with with quick pokes see safe pretty much safe so you just want to lame out with Eddie space 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 turtle poke poke and run poke and run poke and run and then when you get the opportunity that somebody's blocking, that's when you go for your little relax 50-50. See? Your little relax 50-50. When you need when you need to get your health back or something. But yeah, so Eddie's basically just lame. Just play lame, lame, lame. And only go for like relax 50-50s. Basically when you need a life lead again. Because his relax 50-50 is really good. But the issue with it is that it's really punishable. Like there's a lot of characters that can flow him for a lot of damage. But in general... Eddie, Eddie has gimmicks too, but he's you have to play lame. So if you want like a full fledged like like lame type of lame character that has some gimmicks to him and has like a decent 50 50, Eddie will be pretty good for you. But you just gotta know that you can't star step with him. So if you a guy that kind of wants to play 2D Tekken, and because there's some people that are just not good at star walking. So if you a guy that wants to play 2D Tekken and just wanna you just wanna play lame. And get people to chase you most of the fight then uh eddie's good for you so he has 50 50s but i don't really think like that's like his main thing even though he has it like yeah he got it you could be risky with it and do it but you necessarily don't need to do it but it's there if you want to do it you know what i'm saying but i think eddie's best place if you want like a lame type of play style you want to run all day you a turtle type of dude um eddie's good for you so Eddie's like that type of architect spacing, you know, just a lame play style type of thing. Lame, lame play style type of thing. Uh let's let's go to let's go to Lars, right? Let's go to Lars. Okay, so Lars is interesting, right? Because Lars is a poke-heavy offensive character. You have to be very in your face with Lars. You have to poke a lot up close with downfall ones. You know, a lot of pokes. You have to establish a, a offensive mind game with pokes. So you have to do a lot of 50-50 pokes with Lars and then set up, you know, with punish, with arc blast, 
down for two one you know you just have to establish a lot of, of the of the mind game with pokes so if you're a guy that wants to be very very offensive like an offensive poke heavy type of style character um Lars is that type of character he's an offensive poke character you have to be in your you have to be in people's faces to establish a mind game Lars is not very good at uh he has some keep out tools like this but he doesn't excel at that he excels up close because that's where his all his stuff is gonna work at you know what I'm saying he's a big he's a big risky character too so like for him to be scary you have to take big risks so if you want to play like a poke a poke heavy um offensive character that has to take risks to establish some kind of fear to your opponent so then play Lars. Lars is a, a pretty much a risky offense poke character you know he has 50 50s and stuff like that like that and whatever and this and that and then you have to mix up his pokes a lot you know mix up mix up all his pokes but he's very very risky when you have to play scary with him you could play safe with him it's just that it's gonna be risky so if you if you're a new player you want to play somebody that's very offensive plus has to take risk to get damage then Lars will be good for you if you want to be a riskier style player because a lot of Lars they take big risk with this and then they do a lot of launch punish lows like this so he's a risky guy so it's up to you he got counter hit tools of course right like this 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 on counter hit this so you have to really establish an offense and get people annoyed to start running into counter hits and stuff or annoy people with yolo stuff and like stuff like that so he's a riskier type of character so he's an offense dude if you want to pick him up um you could try him and and uh pick him up and and see and see how the character uh see how he works for you he's more of a riskier style of character All right, let's go. Let's let's try a uh, Jack. Jack seven. Then so Jack is a a, a spacing poke heavy 50-50 character. Jack is is he's an in your face type of dude, right? Um, you have to establish a poke a uh, a uh, annoying poke game with with um Jack. To, to get the mindset and the set going you have to use a lot of generic down back ones you know you can establish it for spacing set up with back dash you know what i'm saying down back one space 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 you see what i'm saying standing two standing two back dash four four one bomb and then four four one on block two creates a lot of spacing you see and now Good back dash you know what i'm saying and then if somebody starts running in after that block that they down for it too so he could do both he could space out a lot and, and be really affected by that but he's also really effective if you just establish a poke game to mix people up you say start doing lows start doing lows and they start ducking bomb you do down for one stop ducking while staying one while staying two that and then you can mix it up with that so he has a he has a throw game also you know he has a lot of plus frames so he has a throw game also and then you can bomb with that so he's he's you could play both so he's like a a spacing offensive 50 50 character you have to be a rev you have to really establish the low game with him really establish. he's very e a very easy mind game too it's very very easy to play to play jack the most effective way to play jack obviously is to create a very good 50 50 game you have to be you have to be really good at mixing people up and then also your spacing has to be good too because he's big so he's gonna get rushed down a lot so if your spacing is good um you're gonna do really well with jack because you know he has a lot of keep out moves you know what i'm saying you could get people to run so combination of fundamental spacing a lot of 50 50s to to establish uh a ducking game so once people start ducking you know what i'm saying not only ducking you can also poke with lows and get people to come up to you and then they're gonna start like whiffing and stuff because they're annoyed by the lows. You see, so they're gonna run up to you and they down forward one, crouching down back one, and then you know, start with punishing. You can start with punishing and stuff like that. So Jack, 50-50 uh, uh, offensive spacing poke character. So he's a hybrid of all types of stuff. But in general, he's he's a, like he's a 50-50 character. So if you wanna if you wanna like if you really wanna focus on on being a very offensive with pokes and not using a lot of uh, side step then Jack is a good character for you. All 
All right, let's try a thing now. Fang is a a, a poke a poke heavy character, poke heavy offensive character. So with Fang, you have to establish a poke game a lot. So if you want a character that can basically poke a lot and also set up a lot of counter hits and whiffing with like stand stuff like Kempo, uh, back one if they start jabbing too much or whatever, or start doing uh, mids after your DF1 and then down two for high crush, down back three. He basically has everything. He has good 50-50s. He has a really good poke game. You know what I'm saying? He has really good offense to make you block. So he's a combination of everything. That's why he's top tier. He could play you however the way he wants to. He could rush you down and mix you up. Or he could just like be lame and do Kempo all day and make you whiff and set up counter hits and stuff. So he can also set up counter hits and he could rush you down. So this character is a perfect hybrid. But you have to poke a lot. He's a poking character. You have to poke a lot. You have to set up counter hits. You have to make people annoyed, make people whiff, and start doing Kempo stuff. And, you know, you can make people uh, people guess wrong a lot with, like, his pokes and stuff like that. So he's a perfect hybrid character. So basically, if you want a character that has everything plus has to, but has to poke a lot, uh, Feng is a good character for you. He's a complete character. He's very, you have to be pretty offensive, though, um, with him to, 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 so if you, like, you could play lame, but I feel like he's best, he's best played as a, in your face poke heavy offensive character so that's the type that's the type of character feng Wei is and he has really good punishment too so if you want a character with good punishment um you know you're pretty much good to go if you want a character really good punishment most of the characters i've said have pretty good punishment too so most of the characters we talked about have decent punishment but we're not really getting into punishment this field we talk we just getting into the style of character you know like the bears punishment is okay lee's punishment is really good so also with lee if you want like um he's an execution heavy character so if you want an execution heavy character lee uh his punishment is okay he doesn't really focus on that too much uh jack is very easy easy to punish with so he's pretty easy so if you're a new player and want an easy character play jack is a good one uh fang is pretty easy too so if you're a new player fang is a good pickup um ling zayu She's a she's like a gimmicky AOP style type of character. I'll show ya. I'll show ya some stuff for Bling Zayu too. Just know that I'm not an expert on all these characters, but um I definitely know how the character should be played. And I have a lot of experience in Tekken, so I'm trying to help you guys out for new players that want to pick up all these different style of characters. Cause there's a lot of characters in this game. And um there's a lot to learn. For a new player, I know Tekken Ace coming out, this should help. Um, Ling, she's a big gimmicky character. So if you're a type of player that um doesn't doesn't feel too comfortable with playing defense, Ling is a good character if you're a new player. And um you're kind of scared of mix-ups. Cause honestly, if you're scared of mix-up, it just means that your movement and you don't know too much about the game. But Ling players in general play Ling because they don't need to block too much with her. Because you know, when you get hit, you can avoid with AOP. Or, or, or sidestep AOP, you know what I'm saying? You could, you could, you could just evade with AOP a lot to get away from stuff, and you can also do back turn. So she's a lot of gimmicks and a lot of getting away from stuff when even when it's your opponent's turn. So you have to use AOP a lot to create a mind game and stuff, and also use AOP to get your opponent scared to attack back. And then she has 50-50s from back turn. So she's a big stance heavy gimmicky invasion this type of character so if you want to play a character that defensively you can evade a lot of things without having to block and guess and also annoy people with like going under their moves with aop and it's establishing a 50 50 then you could do that she's a gimmicky a gimmicky i don't want to block type of character kind of kind of similar to oscar a little bit but link a poke and stuff like that and annoy you and stuff like that but she's very gimmicky and word that's that's pretty much it for um but Ling Zayu, you know, she got good punishment too, so. Let's go to the next character. We're going to go to Leo next. We're going to go to Leo next. Leo is a... Uh, Leo is an offense character. Leo's an offensive character. You have to establish a lot with pokes. 
and stances to get people to start running into launchers like down four twos, magic fours. But she's a big, she's a big 50 50 style in your face type of character. So if you want to play somebody that ha that has to poke a lot, plus also establish a, a a scary offense to make you guess wrong, Leo is 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 a good character for you. She has she has a lot of good tools. She has a down two for pressure, down four one. She's a good she's a good poke heavy um offensive character with good counter hit tools and stuff, and a very good wall game, wall splat wall game. Safe that, you know what I'm saying, to mix it up and save that. And then she can mix up the health sweep. So um Leo is a, is a very good uh 50 50 offensive character. So if you want to play somebody that's aggressive with, with some stance stuff or like the box stuff like that, like she she's a she's a very offensive you have to establish a good offense. So if you want an offensive character with good 50 50s and um pretty decent pokes and a and a decent counter hit game, uh she, Leo is good for you. Leo could also play pretty lame too. Leo could keep you out and play lame, so she could kind of play both. But um, I think aggressive play style, uh, mixing up with a with, a, with lame and defense, is a good way to play Leo. Uh, let's let's go to Elisa. All right, so um, Alisa, people play her all kinds of different ways, right? Um, some people are just mad aggressive with her and just kind of spam armor moves and, and chainsaws, you know what I'm saying? Uh, instant running, uh, down three all day. A lot of Alisa players just don't block and just go crazy, you know, armor moves, stuff like that. My opinion with her, you could play her anyway. You could play her like a nut, like what I showed you, just going, you know, just rushing down and just going crazy. You know, say mixing up all day and just going ham and never. Cause she could play both ways. That's why she's a high tier character. You could play like a Looney Tune, or you could play solid. So you could play if you want to be a crazy type of player that plays like that. You could play her. But my honest opinion as a high level player is that Alisa should be played. This is my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I think she should she should just play it as a poke heavy, a movement based character. Cause when you look at her. Like she doesn't have like great 50-50s unless she's in chainsaws. When she's in chainsaws, that's like her best thing when it comes to like mixing you up. The chainsaw stuff is really good and really strong. Plus she has a really good offense tool. It's running that and then she can mix it up with, you know, she can mix it up with that. So she has good 50-50s. So she pretty much has everything. But I would, I would suggest just poking and using your movement to set up whiffs and just play super duper lame. That's how I would play Elisa if I played her. I would just poke, move a lot, and then set up counter hits with magic fours, get my sidewalk into launchers. So I would just poke and use movement a lot. Because like I said, like a 50-50s ain't great unless she's in chainsaw. Yeah, she got a 50-50 with this or that. She can mix that. That's a little 50-50 from Crouch, right? Which is pretty good, but it's just chip damage, right? But I wouldn't, I would honestly, I wouldn't focus on doing that with her. I would just focus on poking, playing lame, annoying my opponent, and then setting up my launches with my counter hits and that, using my movement to advantage. And then when I see my opponent just sitting there and blocking, that's when I go in and I start doing the little 50 50s and then using chainsaw and stuff. So it's a hybrid of um, uh, being super lame, but also mixing it up with a good offense. And always, always, when you have the opportunity, when you do a move, Always go into chainsaw and go for the 50 50 because chainsaw is super safe and there's literally almost no risk in doing chainsaw besides getting stepped and launched. But she has a homie move from chainsaw, so so you can play both. You can play like a nut, you can play solid. So, whatever you want to play or you want to do, Elisa is good for you. But I feel like she's more of a poke carry lame type of character at the end of the day. Plus, you, you can also play offensive if you want to. Asuka, honestly, she doesn't have the best pokes, but she could poke, right? She has little pokes, right? She could poke. Um, Asuka, you want to set up a lot of counter hits. You want to you wanna make people block stuff? Kind of like Lee. She's kind of like Lee. You have to set up counter hits. Get people to attack after down full one. Or just set it, set that up to hit that full thing on counter hit. Um, annoy people. Hit people a lot. Poke them up. So they can start running into back threes. Start falling for... Um, 
reversals see start falling for reversals so she's a she's a a, a poking trying to set up counter hit type of character she's a defensive character so if you want to play somebody that um makes people afraid to be offensive oscar is good for you she's a good counter hit setup character that's basically your main your main goal with oscar is to annoy somebody with like little chip damage and pokes and spacing so you can set up your counter hit and your reversals and stuff like that with can cans and stuff like that also she got a good whiff punch with four too and this is a you know counter hit crush so yeah, she's a counter hit um defensive character. So if you want to play somebody that has to set up like reversals and stuff to stop people from offensive and really forcing somebody to to you know to be offensive on you so you could get damage, she's a good character for you. You just gotta be careful because elbows do own her if you're a little bit too um reversal happy. But yeah, that's how that's how you play her. Okay, Bob is an interesting character. Bob is a... You have to be really offensive with Bob and use a lot of jabs to establish your offense. Because he's pretty slow, right? But, because it's down for 14 frames, but if you use jab, you can make this stuff, a, you know, plus one afterwards, see? So you have to be offensive with Bob. You have to be really in somebody's face. You know, mix up the hell sweep. You use belly, belly mind games. Use his evasionist. See, uses evasion, his poke a lot, set up his counter hits. So Bob is a 50-50 offensive poke monster that has a lot of, you have to basically make people block stuff and then you could um, retaliate with his evasion. It's make people block stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I set one plus two on block, blam, uh, uh, you know, jab, it's a down four two for keep out, counter hit launcher, high crush, you know what I'm saying? So he's a big offensive, um, make you retaliate, and then hit you with something afterwards. So you, if you want a character you have to poke and jab a lot with, but also like really establish, like, okay, I'm gonna rush you down, but you're also gonna be scared to press back because I got stuff like this and that, that he's a type of character. He's a 50-50, I'm gonna see how you retaliate type of monster. So if you want an offensive hand character, plus he has really good whiff punishment too. So he's kind of like the complete package. Um, can you play lame with him? You could, but it's a little bit harder. That's not what he excels at. He excels at rushing you down and making you um, run into counter hits and falling for his evasion, his traps like belly and all of that stuff. So you want to play Bob? That's what you do to play Bob. That's what you do to play Bob. That's what type of character he is. You have to be in somebody's face, 50-50 him, set up the little CH so he's a little hybrid. Brian, um... Brian is all, he's a counter hit fishing character. You have to establish counter hits. You have to, you have to try to land that on counter hit and it's plus one on block, right? Uh, space with that, set that up on counter hit, hit people with soccer ball kicks to annoy them. So you can start, you know, up in the poke game, get in the poke game now. But in all in general, you want to set up counter hits, which is this, this, you know what I'm saying? You want to set up all the counter hits with, um, with uh brian he's a counter hit carry c plus he's at plus and this is plus from some distance too so that's what we want to play with brian because his big damage comes from that so you have to poke a lot and establish a, a very strong offense with him and use a lot of keep out too to set up counter hit so he's a he's a counter hit fishing he's a he's different than lee lee is a counter hit fishing spacing character brian is a counter hit fishing offense character you have to be very aggressive with brian and just set up his counter hit tools. Cause that's where his big damage. He's not really a big 50-50 guy. He gets all his damage from big counter hits. So you always want to establish the counter hit game all the time. That's what you want to do. Always establish the counter hit game all the time. That's how that's how you play um that's how you play Brian. So a lot of offense and a lot of fishing for counter hits. And then on the wall, you have to master taunt. So your execution has to be a little bit up there. He's an execution heavy character. Um, also, you have to learn how to backdash cancel with him. Because if you do it wrong, he's going to get the sway. See? So you got to learn how to do the real backdash cancel with him, too. Because he's a sway character. So that's how you play Brian. Poking heavy. You know, establishing offense. 
But it, establishing the offense is just to set up the counter hit. You shouldn't be really trying to 50-50 somebody too much with Brian. He could, right? He could because he got overall and stuff like that. But you want to, and his punishment is good too. So he, he gets a good reward for playing defensive. All right, Cla Claudio is the next character we're going to go through. Claudio is an offensive character. You have to you have to establish a lot with running to poke up, use a lot of spacing. You know what I'm saying to set up the counter hits. So you just want to use his moves that are like neutral on block like this. You know what I'm saying plus four. You see minus one, minus two. Set up the counter hit. So you have to be really offensive with, with him. He's a off, he's an offensive character. You just want to be really offensive with him and set up his buttons. And get people to be annoyed and start running into stuff. So that's how you play him. You have to be very offensive with him. He's an offense character. You have to set up his. You have to annoy people to, to the point that they start running into stuff like that, falling for magic for. But use your offense to establish counter hits and spacing and um and whiffs and stuff like that. So that's how you play Claudio. And you also can mix. You can mix up with that. So he got he got mixed up tools. You know, mix up size to four. Mix it up with that. But in general, you just want to rush down and then get people annoyed till they start running into hop kicks and, and you know what I'm saying? And and he could f finish strings and shit like that. So that's how you play him. In your face, a lot of rush down so you can set up the counter hits and, um, you know, see how people react to your strings. But it's a lot of pressure with him. It's a lot of pressure with him. So if you want to play with a very offensive character, that has to establish a lot of offense in your face to get you scared, then he's a good character for you. Uh, Devil Jin is a Mishima. So basically Mishimas, you, you need above average execution. You gotta learn how to, uh, you know, you gotta learn how to electric. You gotta learn how to electric. You gotta, you know, learn how to wave dash. So there's a lot of technicalities with him. But in general, with Devil Jin, you wanna poke. You wanna poke a lot to establish, you know, your spacing. You know, get people to whiff with spacing and then setting up electrics on keep out. So you have to play a lot of keep out with him and poke a lot to set up uh, electrics and get people scared to press. You know what I'm saying? Get people scared of press, so when they start like just sitting there and blocking, that's when you go for the 50-50. So in general, Devil Jin is a 50-50 spacing character. You have to establish a lot of spacing, 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 with a lot of poking. Well, a lot of a lot of poking to get people to whiff. And then when they start playing defense, that's when you go for the full throttle. So if you want to take more a bit of a risk to establish 50-50s, you could play safe too. You could do safe 50-50s, because Hell Sweep is just if you want to take big damage and stuff, right? See how I'm doing it? So, Hell Sweep is just a, but he's like a 50 50 spacing character. So, if you want a character with a really good 50 50, but can also poke space and punish really well, then it's good. You just need the execution uh, to do it with Devil Jin. So, you have, like I said, you have to poke and space a lot to establish, you know, whiffs and get people scared. And then when they go defensive, that's when you start doing for 50 50. So, he's a hybrid of a poke. 50-50 character. Plus, he got pretty good, decent counter hits too. Uh, let's go to let's go to Dragon off next. Uh, Dragon off is a more of a. He's a very offensive character. You have to be really offensive. You have to learn how to do instant running too, which is just jab forward into 4-4-2 four, four, and make people block with offense, right? Make people block a lot with full-fledged offense. See, he's really plus. And then you establish your pole game with down two. It's un this is unseeable and it tracks both ways. So a lot of Dragon All players is going to annoy you with this. And then once they start doing that, they start doing while staying four, start sidewalking. So Dragonoff is basically a poke heavy offensive character. 
you have to poke a lot. You have to use down two to establish your mind game and mix it up. With this, you just got to keep on, set up your counter hits. You know what I'm saying? Counter hit that. So you will constantly want to be in somebody's face just to set up counter hits and annoy them with down two and then mix it up with movement. His movement is really good. So you could play drag two ways. You could play drag full offense or you could play lame because his, his movement is really good. It's really good. So you technically don't need to just do down two and running two all day and, and rush somebody down. You could technically just move and let people whiff and then start whiff punishing with stuff like that in DF2. So you could play Dragon Off two ways. So if you want to play really offensive with Dragon Off, you could. If you want to play really lame and get people to run into you and, 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 and you know, just try to chase you the whole game, you could do that. So he's a hybrid of both characters. He could play, he could play both ways. But in general, most people that play drag, they're very offensive. But you have to be offensive with him, but you can also play lame with him too. So you have to poke a lot with him pretty much. So that's my opinion on drag. If you want to play a character that you can also has really good movement, um, you can also play offensive and you can play lame. Dragon Off is a, is a good character to uh, to play if you want to play a character. You know, offense mixed with lame and stuff like that. Uh, now we're going to go to Gigas. We're going to go to Gigas next. All right, Gigas is a big body character. So if you're a guy that doesn't really, that that likes bigger characters in games, then Gigas will be good for you. Uh, Gigas has to use his plus frames a lot to establish a mind game, which was like that. Um, he's a big string finishing character. See, plus, but you could your opponent could interrupt that. See, makes somebody block this and they start swinging. So he's a lot of like checking people to see if they're going to press after certain things. But you have to really be offensive with him. You have to be offensive and poke and establish your, your, your dominance with that. And of course, he can also backdash and whiff punish. But he's more of a, I'm going to make you respect my buttons with my plus frames. So if you want an offensive big guy that you have to like kind of go in. And use, you know, the gimmicky unblockables and stuff. Gigas is good for you. He has a really good one-two punish also. But he's a big offense guy. You got to be in somebody's face. And you got to be get people scared to block. That's what it is. If you block too much on Gigas, you kind of you messed up. Yeah, he has a lot of good pokes like this too. He can open you up. So that's how you play Gigas, man. And also, you have to use his Golem stuff, his unblockable stuff. When he has his Rage Drive, is really good. So he's a very offensive big guy. Plus, he has really good range. So you can play Keep Out with him, too. You can play Keep Out with that, too. That's a good Keep Out move. So yeah, he's an offensive big guy. He's one of the lower tier characters, though, because besides his mauling you, he doesn't really have much. So... But yeah, if you're a big body type of guy that wants to like be really aggressive and not really use sidestep too much, then yeah, he might be good for you. Uh, we're going to Heihachi now. Um, Heihachi is a Mishima. You have to learn how to electric. You have to learn how to... Uh, you have to have, be really good at that. You got to learn how to wave dash. You got to learn how to poke. He's a bit different than other Mishimas. He's not like Devil Jin. That Devil Jin is like a 50-50 type poke heavy character. Um, Heihachi doesn't really have good lows besides this, right? Which is pretty good. But it's it's launch punishable, as you can see. But on hit, it's pretty good. See, on, on hit, is good. But it's 23 frames. If somebody launches that, you know, you get, you get launched. So basically, um, the way to play Heihachi, in my opinion, is um, to make make your opponent block everything. Because if you, as you can see, all his stuff is minus three on block, like low negative. So after this, you could backdash with punish. You could do that. Sidewalk. You could do that. You could. You I mean you could do this jab interrupt to do something slower. See that? That's plus. That's minus one. So his frames are really good. See minus two. You could move. Good jab interrupt. So his his play style is basically offense, but using your negatives and your neutrals and your plus to make people react with buttons back to you. So you can size up, you can set up a size up launch, backdash launch, uh, interrupt, 
uh, counter hit. So basically, I would suggest if you want to play a character that forces somebody, that forces you to be offensive, plus react to what your opponent's going to do on block rather than just go for 50-50s, hey, Hachi's good for you. He's a lot of setting up, making people block stuff, and then setting up uh, a counter hit uh, with punish. It's a lot of spacing, a lot of spacing and a lot of setting up with, like, offense and stuff. If you're trying to play a 50-50 style Mishima, this guy is not for you. He doesn't have, he's not really a 50-50 type guy. He has some mix-ups, like Fierce Crouch this or or that, but he's not really a 50-50 guy. He's more of a making you get established with neutral frames and minus frames on block so he can set up more and more and more offensively. So that's the type of, uh, plus he has good execution. He has a really good jab punish. And then his rage drive is really good too. Uh, it's, a, it's a full string jab uh, joint. So that's you want to play Heihachi. You know that's pretty much it with Heihachi. Uh, let's go to Huaren right now. All right, Huaren is a big offensive character, man. If you want to play a guy like a a string heavy character that has to force the offense and also take big risks with down three fours and stuff, um, he's good for you. Plus, a lot of people don't know how to fight Huaran. And um, yeah, I think he's good for beginners too because when you play him, it's going to feel like like you don't need to really play defense because you could just be offensive the whole game and just win like that. So Huaran is a good character if you just want to play a big, heavy string offense character. And if you don't want to really, if you, you're going to have to defend once you fight, fight somebody that knows how to fight Huaran. But for like a new player, I think Huaran is really good for you. Especially if, um, if you're brand new to the game and a lot of newer players you're going to fight to is not going to know how to deal with, you know, the offense and stuff with Huaran. So Huaran is good for people that want to play a very offensive type character. Plus, um, in the lower levels, you don't really want to think about being being too defensive. You're going to let your offense cover your defense. So, yeah, that's it for Huaran, man. You have to be really offensive with his strings and establish our offense game with him. And, you know, force 50-50s like that. You have to be really offensive. And then, of course, you got stuff like down for two and, and counter hits and keep out and stuff like that. So that's pretty much Huaran. Uh, now let's go. Let's go to Jin. All right, Jin, um, you could do anything with him. He's really good. You could literally do everything with him. Uh, he has really good keep. He has really good pokes. Really good pokes. He has really good pokes. He has good keep out. So you could do anything with him. You could be a very rush down heavy guy. Or you could do like a keep out guy. Keep out with that. Keep out with that. You know what I'm saying? That counter hit. Offense with jabs, so he could do everything. He got parry too. He got stance, so he could. He's a hybrid of everything. So if you want like a complete Mishima, that literally has everything, has good offense tools, has good defensive tools, um, has really good pokes, uh, can establish offense, has a good 50/50 with the health sweep and to, you know, what I'm saying, got instant running. So he's a complete package. So if you want a Mishima, or just a coward that has everything from pokes to punishment to offense, to with punishment, to defensive options, then Jin is good for you. He's a complete character. That's that's all I have to say about Jin. He has he has everything. He's a very good character. So if you want somebody that just overall has everything and you don't really need to worry about much, he doesn't really have a magic four, but he doesn't need to because he has a 13 frame homing move that gets a combo. So he has good jabs and everything. So that's it for Jin. Now let's go to Josie now. And then we're going to do Katarina next. All right, Katarina is, is kind of like Huaran. She's a big stance-heavy string character. So you have to establish her, her mind games or her strings to get people to interrupt and get people to, 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 to block, to block, block, block. To get people to block and, and do stuff. So that's what you got to do with Katarina. 
That's what you got to do with her. So you have to really establish a, a mind game with her. To, to really um get it in with her. So you have to be really offensive. With Josie, I mean. Not Katarina. I'm, I'm sorry. With Josie, you have to really be offensive. And, and really establish an offense game. And you have to really be string heavy with her to get it. So you have to be really in your face and use a lot of pokes and pokes and pokes and establish the offense, establish the offense. Her damage isn't too high. And you have to worry about people interrupting you, but then you can do. But she's like a risky type of offense type character. You have to be really in somebody's face and then annoy them to start running into stuff. And that's when you start doing stuff like that. So you have to be really like in there with her. So if you want like a stance type character that has to force offense a lot, to get people to start running into counter hits and launches, then she might be good for you, but she's not a very great character. All right, Katarina is um, very good. Uh, she's kind of like Lee, I would suggest. The way to play her, if you want a character that, that excels at fishing for counter hits, because she does a lot of damage. She has a magic four into full combo. She has she has that for counter hit. You know what I'm saying? She has good strings. So if you want like a character like a fish for counter hits, plus um be really offensive. With that, you have to use Harry a lot. So so she could play both. She could be really offensive, and then she got a little 50 50 with that. Got a little 50 50 with that. So she's a big, heavy um, counter hit fishing, and you have to really use Harry a lot. She's a little bit on the risky side, but you know. So if you want a character that's easy to play, has good offense with Harry or stuff, and um, is a big is big on counter hit fishing. Uh, she's good for you. So that's how you play her. Very offensive. But offensive so you can set up your counter hits for her big damage. Because that's how she gets her big damage. You have to annoy people a lot with Harrier. You kind of have to spam that a lot. Which is a best stance. Which is that. That's the Harrier thing. So that's how you play her. Counter hit fishing and um, being aggro to set up your counter hits. So she's a counter hit fishing character. Plus she got offensive too. So she's a hybrid of both. Uh, we're going to do Kasumi now. And then we're going to do Kazuya after Kasumi. Uh, Kasumi is a poke heavy character. You have to be fundamentally solid to play with, with Kasumi. You have to poke a lot. You have to establish down forward ones and just poke, be really poke heavy. So she's fun. She's just a fundamental poke character. So you have to like, like poke a lot and get people to start whiffing. To, to, you know set up jabs and side steps and everything like that so you have to be really poke heavy with her and very and establish your poke game establish your poke game you have to poke a lot so if you want a character that's just fundamentally solid you have to poke people so they could whiff so you can start with punishing and then you know a lot of a lot of like setting up your jabs and your moves on block to see if your opponent's gonna retaliate so you get like that so it's a lot of spacing so she's just a fundamentally solid strong character she has to fundamentally beat you up with pokes and stuff just to set up um with punishment and punishment so she's a, just an overall fundamental character so if you want somebody you got to work hard with and poke and just be fundamentally solid with then she's good she has a little 50 50s too but it's gonna be it's hard you have to really poke and you know just play just play solid just play fundamental tech and establish uh whiffs and all types of stuff so we're gonna go to kazuya next I, uh, Kazuya, he's, a uh, he's a big, he's, he has everything kind of, but he's a big 50, 50 character, of course, with the 50, 50, with the hell sweep down Mac three. So if you want a riskier type of character that you have to establish a, a mind game with the hell sweep and mix it up with that and stuff like that and get your offense ready, then he's a, he's a good character. You have to take risks. So if you want a character with a really good 50-50, plus can play keep out and poke out, Kazui is for you. Plus he's a, he's a, he's a riskier style character. You could play him safe, but like I said, of course it's hard to play safe. 
but he he has a hybrid of stuff you know he could poke you a little bit but he's more of a 50 50 trying to scare you you know what i'm saying to to not block anymore because you're scared of the health suite mix up and then you start running into things so you got to be kind of risky with him you got to really establish the the 50 50 game and stuff to get you to be more you know so if you want a character that has good 50 50s plus can establish a a ground game to to get you scared then Kazui is good for you, but he's execution heavy, so I wouldn't recommend him for beginners. Just know that you're probably going to get rushed down because he doesn't have magic fours and stuff like that. But his main game is like fundamental spacing and stuff like that. And then when you get people scared enough to not press because they're scared of that and electric and all that, that's when you start going for the 50-50s and, and being really offensive. So that's what type of character. He's a technical character. All right, let's go to King now. Um, King, if you want a wrestling character and you want, uh, he's one of the few characters in the game that can actually mix you up with throws because his throws they have the same hands, but um, like you know they look like double breaks, but they actually one breaks. So if you want a character that has a lot of that can mix you up with throws and not only just lows and mix-ups and stuff like that and it's really gimmicky has a lot of gimmicks and tricks and stuff like that it has unblockable setups if you get wrong if you get up wrong on the floor and stuff like that then king is good for you so king is a hybrid um he can play really lame too he has really good keep out he has good confirms with that by on counter hit and stuff like that so he's like a gimmicky spacing type of um hybrid character i think he's really affected by playing lame by playing a lot of keep out to set up counter hits and whiff punishment because his movement is really good and then when he sees his opponent just standing there that's when you go for the throw 50 50s and stuff like that so if you want like a grappler type character that can also play really really lame and also scare people with throw mix-ups instead of just you know the regular 50 50 then he's good plus you have to poke a lot with him and just be lame he has a lot of good counter hits and good movements, and he has good spacing. So he's a hybrid character. Good spacing, good movement. So if you want, like, a grappler, you know, you just have to learn how to do chain throws and um, learn how to be lame and learn how to, like, establish your pokes and, and space properly with him and stuff to set up, you know, counter hits and stuff like that. So, and he has a lot of gimmicks on the floor, too. He has good Oki. So if you want to be a little bit more gimmicky and creative, uh, King is a good character for you. So now we're going to do law. Law is also a sly character like Lee. Um, law, you have to you have to learn how to do... Uh, you have to have a good jab heavy play style. You have to use jabs a lot with law. To you know, finish strings. You have to learn how to DSS also. So my opinion about law... You have to be in people's face. He has four one plus two. He has DSS. He has magic four. He has slide mix-ups. You got to learn how to do e slide. So he's a bit, he's a he's different than Lee. Lee is more like a keep out fish for counter hit type of guy. Law is more like a I'm in your face and I'm gonna rush you down all day with jabs. So I, then I can establish a counter hit game too. So he could play both. He could rush you down and just keep mixing you up with like fast pokes. And he also can rush you down with jabs and he got parry and stuff like that. So if you want like an offensive uh, offensive character that you kind of have to be in somebody's face and has really good jabs, then he's good for you. And especially if you want like a slide type of character. He could play lame too, though. He could play lame and then somebody start with him, bye-bye, um, um, three plus four. So he could do both. He could play lame and set up counter hits, but he can also be really offensive while setting up counter hits. So if you want like an offensive style, poke heavy, I'm going to set up my counter hits type of guy and and get you to play the way i want to play law is a good dude he has a lot of tools and he could play he could play both styles he's a really good character but dss is going to take you a little while to learn though but he's an offensive type you know get it in type of character you can also set things up uh right, we're going to go to lily right now Alright, Lily, she's an offensive monster. You want to be offensive with her? You want to poke a lot with her? 
You want to poke a lot with her. You want to get in with this. You want to use back turn for mix-ups. She's a, a riskier style character. He's a riskier style character. You kind of want to be in people's faces. You know what I'm saying? A lot of a lot of poking. A lot of getting people annoyed. Uh, to run into backflips and stuff like that. So you have to be offensive with her. And you please use her movement. Her side step is really good. So I feel like Lily, most of the time when you're pressuring a lot, you have to be set making the opponent attack and reading their button habits so you can size up to the proper way where, where you need a step. So that's how you should play Lily. You should poke and be very offensive, plus constantly stepping to avoid, because people was going to do keep out moves to get you off of them, right? To, to get you off of the offense. So you should be using that and also using a lot of, um, a lot of stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? To... Once somebody gets blocked, start blocking, you can start doing your offense game. So please, you know, use her movement and um, use her 50-50s and just establish your offense game to set up sidewalks and launch. So that's the type of character she is. A more, she's a more offensive, risk-taking, I'm going to move, move, move to set up whiffs with launches and stuff like that. Um, Lucky Chloe, honestly, she's very easy to play. Has really good pokes. Um, very easy to play. Big, big, big damage on counter hits. Big, big damage. Big damage on all counter hits across the board. See, big damage. So, and all in general, Lucky Chloe... She's a risky character. Um, I would suggest just poking a lot, being really offensive, and just keep setting up counter hits. Keep set up that. Set up that on counter hit. That on counter hit. Just keep setting up counter Just keep poking a lot and trying to get that long, trying to set up the counter hit. So if you want to play like a, a gimmicky character that can literally steal games from you, will like, you know, bait you with that backswing blow. And just somebody that does a lot of damage, but it's not necessarily like the best character. But if you want like a riskier character that's going to allow you to steal games and just be really, really easy to play, then you could play her. If you just want to, you know, gimmick people out or in general, like do just big damage really fast off of counter hits. I just warn you, she's really unsafe and you got to be kind of crazy with her. So uh, if you want that type of riskier style, offensive counter hit fishing character then uh lucky chloe's for you especially if you if, if you knew you want to play somebody easy uh master raven um she has everything she could poke you up she got back turn mix-ups uh counter hit setups so she has everything. So this is, a, this is another hybrid character that's really good 50-50s, good lows, good gimmicks. So if you want a character that just has a hybrid of everything, including counter hit mix-ups, good pokes, good offense, good whiff punishment, then she's good for you. She's a good hybrid character. She has everything. She literally has everything. So And good counter hits too. So this is a complete character. So if you want to play a character that's complete, and is very strong and has a lot of tools, but is a little bit more on the riskier side, then Master Raven is good for you. She's a complete character. She has everything. So she's a hybrid character. She can rush down. She can poke. Uh, a lot of gimmicks, too. So if you want to be a little bit more gimmicky, Master Raven is also good for you. Now, now let's go to Miguel. And then we're going to do Nina after Miguel. Right, Miguel is a poke heavy monster. You have to poke a lot with him to, to set up counter hits, hop kicks, and things. So if you want a character that you have to poke a lot with, like constantly poke to set up um counter hits and offense, then Miguel is good for you. He's a poke, he's a poke heavy, he's a very poke heavy, establishing counter hits and offensive type of guy. A lot of single strike pokes to set up uh side step whiffs. Uh, counter hits, back dash launchers. So you have to poke a lot to establish your offense and your mind game and your counter hits with Paul. I mean, with, with Miguel. And um, 
with Miguel and uh, and that you set up his offense like that with Savage. So it's a lot of poking and baiting with movement, movement, because his back dash is really good and his side step is really good. So that's basically what you do with Miguel. So if you want like a poke heavy character that has really good movement and has to set up counter hits and with punishment with poking a lot, then Miguel was good for you. Plus he's not that hard to play neither. So now we're gonna go to Nina. Nina is a very offensive poke heavy character. Plus she has a lot of evasion and stuff like uh like this. You know, she can set up launches with that. But Nina in general, you want to poke a lot and be really offensive to set up your counter hits. Plus uh she can rob people too. She has a lot of scrubby stuff. So a lot of people that play Nina are like people that are not like fundamentally solid. So they play Nina because Nina allows players to not have to really block too much because she could kind of go crazy on you. With, like armor moves, 4-3-3, uh, side step one cancel. So if you're a guy that's not really too fundamentally solid and you kind of want to like steal games from people, um, you could play Nina. Because Nina, honestly, like you could play her fundamental and just have really good movement and poke. But most people that play Nina, they just go crazy. They just go crazy. They just like play really risky and they super offensive. But I, my suggestion with Nina is just to poke a lot. Um, use her sidewalk a lot. And uh, set up for like punishment and stuff like that. But most people that play Nina, they're pretty crazy. So you can play it both ways, man. If you want like a riskier type of character that you want to go in with, Nina is good for you. Or if you want to be fundamentally solid. But you just have to poke a lot to establish counter hits and and get people to finish, you know, attack after your strings and stuff like that. So she's a very, very aggro, aggro character. Paul, honestly, he's very easy to use, and I would recommend him for beginners. If you're a beginner, Paul is really good for you to play. He's very easy to play, easy-ass combos, really high damage, like very high damage. Uh, good 50-50 if you're if you, um, close enough with that. Then he can mix it up with this. Uh, he has a throw game. 50-50 with that. Good plus. So, yeah, Paul is a character. Um, he could steal games too. That's another thing with Paul. So if you a, if you a new player and want to play a character that does big damage off the get go, and and you know you want to make a lot of comebacks, um, he's good. So I would recommend Paul. Just to poke a lot with Paul, establish your mind game so you can establish the big moves, right? Like this on whiff punish, this on counter hit, get people to do this, hard read that for the for the high crush. You know what I'm saying? Get this on counter hit. So you have to fish for counter hits with Paul. That, he does big damage and get people annoyed. And then, then that's when you start doing 50 50 with him. So he's a good comeback, easy to play, big 50 50 heavy damage type of dude that can also play a solid ground game. So he's a really good character, really strong. Uh, Shaheem is a is a poke heavy character, kind of like Lee. So if you want like a poke character with a good slide mix up, Shaheem is good for you. He he has good tracking, good pokes. He's just fundamentally solid, so he's kind of like Kasumi too. He's kind of like Kasumi too. They have to poke a lot. You can also space with him and set up a lot of counter hits with him too. He's just fundamentally solid. He's very fundamentally solid. So if you want to play a fundamentally solid poke heavy character, you have to poke a lot to, to set up um, side step launchers and counter hits and stuff. He's not really like a 50-50 guy. Like he could 50-50 you with pokes, but I don't think that's primarily what you want to do with him. But yeah, he could mix you up with pokes and stuff. And he has a really good slide mix up that you can mix people up with. But you just want to establish pokes and to, to do setups with him. So he's more of a poke heavy I'm establish a counter hit game spacing sidewalk type of character. So if you want to poke every character that has good fundamentals and it'll help you get fundamentally solid, he's good for you. Uh, so we're going to go Steve now. And after Steve, we're going to do Yoshimitsu.
Steve is a counter hit fishing character. So with Steve, you want uh, uh, you want to um, do a lot of spacing with jabs, but also space out to set up the counter hit uh, back one, down forward two. You want to annoy with pokes, down forward two ones. Uh, Peekaboo, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, he's a counter hit fishing character, man. He's a counter hit fishing character. Basically, you just want to poke people up and use your jazz for spacing to set up sway stuff. Um, set up back one. So so if you want a character that's a big counter hit fishing guy and you have to space a lot and poke a lot, Steve is good for you. You have to, you have to fish with counter hits. That's how he gets his big damage. Plus, he does have good 50-50s with it. He has quarter four one, and you can mix it up with this. You know what I'm saying? So he has a little good 50-50s, but he's he's a spacing counter hit character. Plus, he's really safe. And if you like boxers, he'll be good. He's also a little bit he's a little bit harder to play. Uh, we're gonna go to Yoshimitsu. And then we could do Akuma. Uh, Yoshimitsu, he's a he's a defensive monster. What I mean by that, Yoshimitsu is one of the few characters in the game that he doesn't need to respect your frames. Anytime somebody attacks you when they add plus, you can make them stop doing their offense by just flashing them. So if you want a character that could disrespect uh, frames and also has a lot of good unblockables um, on the on the floor, then he's he's a he's a good character to play. He has really good Oki. But in general, with Yoshi, your main goal is to knock somebody down so you could get uh, uh, um, unblockables and stuff. So that's your main that's your main goal with with, with Yoshi. Knock somebody down and get your unblockable setups and force Oki on them. And also get people scared to press on you. So if you want a, a, a gimmicky uh, character that's main goal is to is to get people to press so you can flash them and then knock them down and then do your little unblockables and stuff, Yoshi is good for you. He's a gimmicky, he's a gimmicky defensive character, kind of like Asuka. Akuma's next. And then we could do Eliza and then we could do all the DLC characters after that. All right, so Akuma, if you play Street Fighter and you and and if you play Street Fighter 2D game, you should just play Akuma. Akuma is for them for the 2D guys. If you're a new player but you come from a 2D background, you happen to be a Street Fighter player or something, Akuma is great for you. He does a lot of damage. If you could do all the EX mass cancel stuff, and if you want to not play Tekken, then play. If you want to play, if you want to play a 2D fighting game in Tekken, play Akuma, man. That's all I need to say about that, man. He has easy hit confirms for if you play Street Fighter, high damage, meter, if you're good at using meter. So in general, if you're just a 2D player and you want to get into Tekken, play Akuma, man. I don't know if he's going to be back at Tekken 8, but yeah, play Akuma if you're a 2D guy, man. He's definitely a very offensive, you know, scare people with low shorts and then you mix it up with that and get people to duck and then, you know, confirm into that, focus attack. Yeah, so he's an offensive, I want to play 2D type of character. So we're gonna do we're gonna do the DLCs. I'm gonna tell you guys how to, you know, for new players. Uh, Eliza's the same thing as um as Akuma. If you're a 2D guy, play her. You have to um you have to establish your your um offense with dive kicks a lot. So she's a very offensive character. So you just gotta keep you know doing the dive kick pressure to get that on you know max cancel so you just have to be really offensive with her and set up set up her um her wall stuff and use dive kick a lot and get people to run into counter hits with this too so that's how you play her a lot of dive kicks a lot of offense to set up her counter hits and get people to run into stuff like that and that too for counter hit launcher so that's about it and you have to learn how to do it so ex stuff you know see See like that, and then wall splat, and then you gotta get very offensive, demon flip, demon flip, two D type character, very offensive.
All right, Geese. I played Geese for a long time. Um, honestly, in this season, um, Geese, you just want to poke a lot and, and set up his big damage, which is standing too. And get Raging Storm. So basically with Geese, you just want to poke a lot and set up his big counter hit stuff. So if you want to play a character that does a lot of damage when he has meter, and a character that you just literally just poke him just to get pretty much this. Geese is good for you. You have to poke a lot with him and then set up his big damage and get the parry too. So Geese is just a lot of poking to set up big damage and set up counter hits. Kind of like Lee. He's almost the same thing as Lee. So if you want like a big counter hit fishing um, with, with, with fishing character. That does a lot of damage. Uh, Geese is for you, especially if you play SNK and KOF and stuff. So you have to fish a lot. You have to fish a lot. He doesn't really have good 50 50. So if you want a 50 50 character, Geese is not for you. But if you want a character that could just chip and then set up big damage, then Geese would be good for you. All right, let's go to knock this. So we got a couple of characters left. All right, knock this honestly. Um, I think you should just pressure with him a lot, and and yeah, you should just pressure with him and poke a lot, and then get people to whiff so you could do whiff punishment because his whiff punishment is like the best thing about him. So that's what you want to do with knock this. You want to establish like a poke game with him. You want to poke a lot, and then use a lot of keep out. But you have to use your offense too to get people to to open up and stuff like that. But yeah, man, that's how you play knock this, man. Just just establish an offense game. And just fish for whips. So if you want like a character with really good range and has to be, you know, um aggressive just to set up whiff punishment, then Noctis is good for you. But there's a lot of better characters you can play than Noctis, honestly. Or if you just like found fancy a lot, you can play him. So let's go to Anna. Uh, Anna is a very offensive character. You have to really force 50-50s, the Fierce Crouch stuff, with her to get big damage. So you have to be in people's face. You have to use this stance a lot. And poke a lot, poke a lot, poke a lot. And get people scared so you can start doing thing, that thing. And then she got counter hit setups too. She has a lot of counter hit stuff. Magic 4. She has uh, really good strings and stuff. So, honestly, if you want, like, a big 50-50 heavy character that can also be very offensive and poke and has a good counter hit game, then Anna is good for you. So, if you want to, like, really mix people up or also poke, 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 poke and, and, and get big damage off of stuff, Anna is a good character for you. She's really risky, too, but very offensive and strong. But just has bad uh, sidewalk. Well, you can step her. But she's an offensive monster. You have to use stance. She, plus, she has stances too. Uh, Lei Wu Long. Um, if you want, if you just want like a stance heavy character, he has a lot of mix ups off his stances and stuff. And um, he can also play really lame and run away with ha ha step. So if you want a character that could just run away and, and just be lame the whole game, and also has really good gimmicks and 50 50s if you just want a gimmick character that could play a very good offense game and can also run away also he's a hybrid too so Leo is good for that man he has good gimmicks he has good run away he's he's more advanced so if you want like a stance heavy character with a lot of uh stuff that you could play around with and mix people up and also pressure people and then you know run away and stuff like that he could play both ways so i think he's pretty good he's a little bit hard to play but he's a hybrid character he could he could 50 50 people and he could annoy the hell out of you so he could do both so he's a he's a solid character but he's a bit more technical so if you want more of a stance type you know run away type of ling zayu type of character then you could play lay it's just gonna be a con uh work and he's pretty risky too you have to take risks with him he has a good knockdown low too see he has a good knockdown low too so uh, let's go to Marduk. Then we're going to go to Armor King.
All right, Armor King, honestly, he's really good. Does a lot of damage. If you want, like, a big body character, that's the best big body character in the game. Uh, he's a good character. He has good lows. Um, he could cheese you out with, with, with this. This is, like, a big 50-50 that you got to guess. He does a lot of big damage. He gets a lot of damage from hard reads, too, and counter hits. So if you want, like, a bigger type of character that does a lot of damage and, and, and can scare people defensively, and offensively, then he's good because he has a lot of counter hit tools. He has that. He's good if you want like a good 50-50 character to make people scared of block. And he's really good for Tekken 7 because he does a lot of big damage. And he has good Oki too. He has really good throws too. So he's a hybrid character. So if you want a bigger character that kind of has to like really force the force the offense on you. And then and then you know he could space out and do that and stuff like that. So if you want a bigger character that doesn't necessarily need to use movement too much, then he's good for you. He's a good character if you don't really want to use movement like that. Or just somebody in general if you want to steal games and stuff like that. With well, He's cheesy. He's cheesy and he's really strong. And he has a good Oki uh, ground game too. So if you want like a bigger character that's one like kind of like Paul that wants to steal games, um, he's good for you. Uh, Army King is, like, is just like King. The only difference is Army King is... Has, a, has better pokes than King. So Army King is pretty much a character you want to play if you want to really focus on spacing a lot. If you want to be focused on spacing and have an easy time beating people online with 4-4-2, because 4, -4, 4, 4 neutral 2, that joint is cheesy online. You can't step it. And his throw game is OD. So if you want like an easy scrubby version of King that you could kind of play like easy keep out and easy spacing, like yeah, play Army King. Army King is like a scrubby version of King. That you could just like do easy keep out, easy spacing, and um all kinds of stuff like that to 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 win. Plus he could poke heavy. So if you want like a a, a version of King that has better whiff punishment, better poking, then Armor King is the go. But King overall is better than Armor King. But he's a hybrid of a, and he has throw mix-ups too. So if you want to combine the poking with the spacing with the throw mix-ups and you want to cheese people out, he's a good character to play. Julia is a hybrid, one of those hybrid characters. She has everything. She can condition you easily. So if you want a character with a cheesy elbow that you can't really do much to it, and it, and it high crushes and all kinds of stuff, and then on block is zero, like, she's good. She has really good offense. She has a lot of I'm going to make you block stuff and then finish strings type of stuff. She has really good 50-50s. She has really good range. So she's another hybrid character. If you want a character with, like, good 50-50s, good counter hits, good offense, good counter hit setups, she's good for you. She just has a hybrid of everything. So if you want, like, a complete character, that's a little bit, you know, she's not the easiest character to play, but she's really, really good. A little bit on the technical side, and she doesn't really, she doesn't have, like, a generic downfall one, but she doesn't need to because she gets this into that. Free. Oh, you get this into that free if you duck it. And then she got 4 2 1 on the wall. She got one of the best wall games in the game. So she's a hybrid character. You have to use shotgun a lot, too. You have to use shotgun a lot. So establish. See? So, yeah, man. You could counter hit fish with her. You could do whatever you want with her. You could counter fish with her. You could poke. You could mix up. You could turtle. She got magic forward. She got fierce crouch mix-ups. So, yeah, man, if you want to play a character that has everything, is one of the better female characters in the game, you could, you could check her out. Now we're going to go to Negan. Um, Negan, he's a poke-heavy offense character. He has a lot of plus frames. But that, that's that's not it. But she has a, he has a lot of he has a lot of plus frames with this. This is very plus on block. Um, this is very plus on block. Wall bounces. This is plus on block. So he has a lot of stuff that's really plus on block, and he has a lot of pokes. So Negan in general, you just want to play offensive and poke a lot to set up with punishment, and, and and to set up um counter his stuff too, like this. 
So he's a he's a, he's a very fundamental character. He's really good. He could he could play keep out. He could poke. So you want to poke a lot with him to set up whiffs and just hit confirm one two four. So I said one two four. So he's a poke heavy um, counter his setting up character. You want to set up a lot of stuff with pokes. So he's really good. He's a fundamentally really solid character. So if you want to play somebody with good range, um, really good pokes and good punishment. He's a good character to play. He could really establish the offense, and he could play lame too. So he could do both. He could. He has to poke a lot though. So if you don't want to poke a lot, I wouldn't suggest playing Negan. And if you don't want to be offensive, then I wouldn't suggest playing him neither. Um, Safina, really good movement. So if you want to play a character that basically has everything, she could rush you down with this. She could make you stand still with that. She could make you block with this on block. She has good lows. So if you just want to win, honestly, <laughs> you could play her, man. She's mad good. She got everything, man. She could play lane. She could turtle. She could poke. So if you just want a lame character that has like stances that can evade mids and all kinds of stuff and also establish a really good offense game and also just run away and make it hard for people to even attack you, then she's good. Plus, she's really easy to play. She's really easy to play, too. She has a lot of pokes, too. So if you want a character that can play offense, poke a lot, space a lot, also make you block stuff and stances to, to lead into more stuff, then she's really good for you. She's just a really good character to play. She could set up a lot of stuff too. So I could say, you see, there's a lot of offense and poke stuff to establish even more stuff on block to make you respect more stuff on block. So a very good character. Um, Garu, honestly, um, you have to be really offensive with him. You have to set up jabs a lot. You have to rush down with down one plus two. So if you want a, like a bigger character that has to rush you down and has to really force the 50-50s with down, uh, down four three, down four two, and, and really get at you, then Garu is good for you. His, his side up is not that good, but he has to really rush you down and mix you up. And, and interrupt you with stuff like that so if you want like a bigger guy that really has to go in and poke you poke you and mix you up a lot then garu is good for you because that's what garu has to do he has to be very offensive he's also not very fast so you're gonna get interrupted a lot but you have to really establish the 50 50 game with him really establish the 50 50 game with him and really use standing jab a lot because standing jab is really plus it's like plus three plus four so you have to poke a lot with him too So we're gonna go Leroy. All right, so Leroy's next. Honestly, Leroy, he's he's cheap. He's like a better version of Oscar, with like better lows and better pokes and better 50-50s and counter hit 12 frame that. So if you wanna play a character that doesn't really need to respect a lot of things in Tekken, cause he could just parry everything. And he's really easy to play and he has knockdown lows and all types of stuff uh this he got the Huaran joint he could he could parry like almost all the stuff in the game so if you want a character that doesn't really need to respect a lot of things in tekken and is also really easy to play and can also force a 50 50 on you and and also play the counter hit lane keep out game too with the counter hits and and the, the confirmed 10 frame joint that he's good for you man he's cheesy easy to play uh you know a little risky but he's a, he has a hybrid of anything so if you want to play like a hybrid character that doesn't really need to respect a lot of things in tekken he's a good character to play so now we're going to go to fakuram and then kunimitsu and lydia are going to be the last characters that we do uh fakuram he's an offensive character what a what good keep out you have to you have to very much um make people respect your strings because you see that he does that and that could wall splat you so with the delay charge shit he can really um he, he makes you you have to play offensive to make people want to interrupt your strings 
so you could finish them. And then they don't, if they don't finish them, then that's when you do the the, the charge boys. That's when you do the charge boys. So that's how you play Fakaram. You have to be mad offensive. Mad offensive. And um and basically get people to wanna hold back so then you can do the, the splat boys on the wall. The the whole charge joint. So that's how, that's what you do with Fakaram. They nerfed him a lot, so I don't know if you wanna play him, but that's how you play him. You have to establish a big offense game with him and be offensive. And they get people to try to interrupt, kinda like Josie, but then he got he got the wall splatting boys too. Um, Kunimitsu, play her if you want to win. I'm just keeping it real. This character's mad cheesy. Homie move. Unseeable lows. Extremely good backdash cancel. Easy plus frames all the time. She makes you block this. This is like neutral on block, though. So she could do that. So if you want to play just a cheap-ass lame character that could just 50-50 you. Fifty fifty you and stuff and, and, and just cheese you out. Cause that's what she could do. She could cheese you out. She has 50 50s. She has lame. She has one of the best armor moves in the game. With that. Like she's just really cheesy. So if you want to win and play a lame ass character with gimmicks and good 50 50s and unseeable lows and somebody that can easily control the match, like extremely easy, with like minimum to no effort, then yeah, she's good for you, man. She has gimmicks, she has really good pokes. She could just run away and lame you out all day. Or if she wants to, she could just be crazy and just 50-50 you the whole game and beat you. So she's a complete character. Uh, easily top tier. So the last character is Lydia. Honestly, I wouldn't really recommend playing Lydia because they nerfed her a lot. But if you do want to play her, you have to make you you have to kind of make people respect your, your strings. You hit people with that, you have to make people respect the stances a lot. You have to you have to use that a lot. You have to make people respect that. To get the unblockable into that. And just use that a lot in space, space, space. And just use her stances a lot. That's what you gotta do. You have to really condition with the stance. And poking, you really use that for spacing. Because it has good keep out. But that's mostly what you're doing the whole game. You're just doing that, that. And then when you get the opportunity, you could do your little knock your little knockdown lows and stuff like that. You know, but you have to just use that a lot and set up the stances and her little stuff from stances. But yeah, guys, that's it for this video, man. This is one of my most ambitious projects, and I just made this for because I know there's going to be a lot of new players that are going to get into Tekken because of Tekken 8. So I hope this video helps, man. If you have any other videos y'all want me to make, let me know. But be sure to follow uh, my Twitch, which is FindGM underscore Tekken. Follow the TikTok, FindGM. Follow the YouTubes. Please subscribe to the YouTube. Like and comment. Um, follow the, the Twitter, which is Fighting Gym also. And thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to keep making all these type of content for you guys. And I'm keep putting in that hard work for you guys, man. Because I really want to show people that, you know, I'm a content creator that should be taken seriously. And I want to help the community, man. Because I've been playing in tournaments for a long, long, long time. And I want to do something else besides that. And that and what that is is to help the community and help, good, and help new players get good at the game. And also give give new players knowledge from an OG like me that's been playing the game for almost like 20 years. So thanks everybody for supporting my content. We almost had 3K subscribers. So I want to give y'all this guy, uh, these guys, you guys this video. So thanks everybody for watching and I hope y'all enjoyed this video and um, take care and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out everybody.